So you're looking at defining God's kingdom. Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you four views that enhance our enjoyment of God's kingdom on earth. Welcome. I'm Dr. Steve, and you get to spend some time with me in this YouTube channel learning about how to have a vital connection with God that produces evident results in your life. So let's go. Today we're looking at four views that enhance our enjoyment of God's kingdom on earth. Number one, the hope of the kingdom. When Jesus arrived on the planet, it was a vital time for the fulfillment of the messianic prophecies about the kingdom of God coming to earth. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom in this verse refers to the long-awaited entry of the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Son of David, the King of Israel, the Saviour of all mankind. The kingdom was near because the King was here, and this gave humanity great hope, the hope of His presence. Where do we get our hope from today? We get it from being in God's presence. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit poured out on all flesh. We can open up to the presence of our God in our times of prayer, worship, and reading the Word. Just the other day, my wife was having her morning devotions, and she found a great verse that she sent me. So now we draw near freely and boldly to where grace is enthroned to receive mercy's kiss and discover the grace we urgently need to strengthen us in our time of weakness. There are times in your life where you need hope and strength and renewal. And when you come into God's presence through the power and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, you know that you can receive all of the presence of God. You can have hope, you can have confidence and renewal in your soul. Everything you need is found in God's presence. As God's King, Jesus offers the blessing of God's rule, now available to bring life to every human experience, as well as deliverance from the dominance of either flesh or the devil. How do we do this? By spending time with Him, drawing near, hearing His voice through the Bible, worshipping Him, praising Him, thanking Him for all good things. During my times of worship and encountering God in this prayer room, the kingdom of God opens me up to greater realities. God's power, God's dominion, God's wealth, God's understanding and revelation floods my heart because the spirit of life gets on the inside of me opens my mind, stops me from being in self-deception, and I am allowed to be filled with this presence and enjoy those encounters. You can enjoy an encounter with God right now. Can I pray for you? Father, I welcome you to move by your powerful spirit. Let your kingdom come into the lives of people watching this video right now. Let them sense as they open their heart the presence of your kingdom, the glory of your presence, the life-giving essence of who you are. Show people freedom and deliverance from all the darkness and all the depression and negatives that come around humans. Thank you for your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Number two, synonymous expressions of the kingdom. As we explore the scriptures, the word of God, the Bible, to discover the promises that God gives to his kingdom people, we must understand that there are many terms used for this powerful kingdom of God. And when we discover that and understand that, we can see the breadth and the, and the wonderful revelations that God has for us in the truth. And we can understand and we can know all that God has in store for us. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Assuredly, I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. We see in this verse that Jesus himself uses the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God as interchangeable, synonymous terms. Although some make a labored distinction between them, this text and 10 others in the Gospels clearly show that the kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God are verifiably synonymous. 
It's so important for us to understand all of the terms that relate to the kingdom of God because then we can draw the rich treasures out of them, the promises, the hope, the principles that we can obtain from the scriptures so we can live out the powerful kingdom on planet earth. As a young believer at Bible college, going out and sharing the gospel with people, I saw powerful encounters where people would get born again. And I was amazed when I saw this wonderful situation. Matthew was the only New Testament writer who used the term kingdom of heaven. And this was because his originally intended audience were Jewish believers. And it would have been irreverent for him to mention the word God too many times in his writings. And because of this, he used a variety of terms for the kingdom of God. He used kingdom of heaven 32 times, the kingdom seven times, kingdom of God five times, the father's kingdom four times, the kingdom of the son of man two times. Each term that you've just seen is synonymous or interchangeable with the kingdom that Jesus Christ rules. And it's important for us as believers to know that as we're searching the scriptures, as we're reading the Bible, we learn and grow in the principles of the kingdom, the kingdom dynamics, the power of the kingdom. And as we do this, the kingdom of God flows through us more freely. Because Jesus Christ has come into us, the Spirit of God has come into us, and because of that, the power of God's kingdom is residing in every single believer. We live according to His principles. We release the power of His Word. And because of that, the world around us can be transformed and changed, and we can claim back God's kingdom territory on planet Earth as we walk and live according to the Bible. As believers, it's vital for us to get greater understanding of the definitions of God's kingdom because it promotes a greater level of living for each one of us. Because wherever God's kingdom comes, freedom and liberty and power and breakthrough is the result. So I encourage you to open up to these kingdom principles as I share them with you. If you've been enjoying this video so far, hit the like and subscribe button and the notification bell so you can receive so many more of these videos in future and share them with your friends so that they can be changed as well. Number three, John's writings of the kingdom. Exploring the Bible and looking at the authors who were with Jesus, sharing about the kingdom of God, gives us a great frame of reference for the kingdom moving in and through our lives today. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight, so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Jesus was declaring that his kingdom was not emanating from this society, from this world. It came from another dimension. World, Greek, cosmos, focused on the earth contrasted with heaven and the secular world, a world system alienated from and opposed to God, lying in the power of the evil one. Strong's 2, 8, 8, 9. This word cosmos shows us that Jesus' kingdom comes from a place that is opposed to this world's order of thinking. The demonic, deranged ways, the depression, all the discouragement. But God's kingdom can enter in and shed a light and bring people out of darkness into God's kingdom of life and light. John adopted the phrase eternal life. Why did John adopt the term eternal life? Well, towards the end of the first century, when John wrote his gospel, the believers, the Christians, were being accused of having goals that were political rather than spiritually focused goals. John, wisely led by the Holy Spirit, used the term eternal life to describe the value of this life and the length of this life. And because of this, he used the term eternal life 15 times in his writings, and the words kingdom of God only six times. But this doesn't relegate the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God just to the times of Jesus Christ on planet earth or just to the birth of the new church. No, it relegates it to eternity and of all time. Notwithstanding the fact that the birth of the church 
did introduce a new era in human history. The message of the gospel of the kingdom was not changed. As the new church rose up and advanced all over the world, many, many hundreds of thousands of people were brought into the kingdom. Souls were saved, lives were changed, darkness was pushed out, and the believers shared the gospel of the kingdom. People were delivered from satanic oppression. Light came in, darkness left. And we see through Asia and many other locations that the kingdom of God rose up and spread all over the world. And that's happening today. The kingdom of God has not stopped advancing as the gospel of the kingdom has been preached. When the Holy Spirit came, he was that source of power. When Jesus was walking on the planet, the Christ, the anointed one, the Holy Spirit empowered him. And now we, as the church, Christ ones, Christians, we are anointed as well. We are Christ followers. The kingdom has come. The king is on the inside of us. And his power, his anointing, the Holy Spirit moves through us today. In the video description, I have placed a link to a free resource for you all about the kingdom. Kingdom Principles by Dr. Miles Munro, Preparing for Kingdom Experience and Expansion. This is an amazing free resource for you with over 200 pages sharing nine principles of the kingdom that will change your life. Number four, Paul's writings of the kingdom. Paul's theology was sound. And he worked it out with the Holy Spirit as he came out of Judaism into this new form of God's kingdom life on planet Earth as a born again, spirit filled believer. And Paul understood what God was doing on planet Earth, bringing a new kingdom. And that's why he preached the gospel of the kingdom wherever he went. To them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Paul most frequently refers to the new life potential of believers as being in Christ. That means his kingdom goes wherever we go. Wherever Christ is and we follow him, his kingdom is right there. Jesus has never stopped being king of his kingdom. And as we are in Christ, we never have to stop experiencing the kingdom power of his kingdom. The term in Christ clearly places the believer in the circle of all that is represented and contained in the king, his salvation conquest and his personal rule. The kingdom of Satan has been defeated. The strategies of the enemy of death, destruction and decay can be overcome through the kingdom of God, through the kingdom of Jesus Christ, moving by the power of his Holy Spirit through our lives. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. In the kingdom of His Son, believers can have seven things. We can know the joy of a relationship with God. We can be free from the rule of the flesh. We can enjoy freedom from the devil. We can be led by the Spirit. We can be empowered by the Holy Spirit. We can realize a beginning reinstatement of our rulership under God. And we can overcome the works of the enemy. This is the new life we get to live as believers, living in the kingdom benefits and the power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Paul the Apostle was passionate about teaching and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The Holy Spirit, the agent of the kingdom of God, desires for you and I to keep advancing God's kingdom. And that's why the next video that I show you is all about I am not ashamed. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. It's the gospel of the kingdom that saves lives. And in this next video, I'm going to share with you six things that make the gospel of the kingdom great. So I encourage you to click on it as it comes up.